missed the announce don't recording live from you can have I'll give you fifty dollars <laughs> one box let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat <laughs> Let's start. Warning, the following program contains scenes of death. Glasgow, Scotland. The throat tattoo capital of the UK, where most of the girls over 20 years old are missing their teeth, which is all right by me, because I hear it feels better when they give you a blowjob. No, I apologize. Oral sex for any of you sensitive viewers, but for me, a cocksucker is a cocksucker. I don't believe in discrimination, and being that Glasgow is the only city in the world where 40-year-old men ride around on BMX bikes at 10 a.m. in the morning drinking beers. Well, it makes a city unique. Lovable rogues, if you will. Now open to your perusal. One James Scott. Handsome James here was involved in a serious work-related accident. You can tell it was serious because there's guys with hazmat suits. Well, actually they have nothing to do with James's accident. I just put him here to buy into the public hysteria. The window repairman had four tons of glass fall on his ass. Literally. And after multiple surgeries on his lower abdomen, including his ass, and having to have a steel rod permanently put inside of his cock. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. But now handsome James discovered that he had a new medical issue. I got a boner! I got a boner! Yeah, now James has a boner that won't go down. Yeah, his cousin lots of embarrassment as well. His own kids don't even want to see him, and he's afraid to go out of his apartment because he can't wear pants. And now with this predicament, he plans to sue. Shut the fuck up, James. Not everything in this world is meant to stay up indefinitely. Key Sand Point, the St. Petersburg Sport and Concert Complex. Built in 1980 by the commies to show off Russia's grandiose achievements for the 1980 Moscow Olympics. And although the building had aged, many thought it should stand forever as a tribute to the motherland. But the current political party disagreed and they started the laborious process of disassembling the once great architecture and selling it for scrap. These two jugheads here are welders and they're gonna be removing some of the more valuable fittings. They know it's a big job and they've been guaranteed seven months worth of work and this is their first day. And my guess is, is that they're pretty happy because it's Russia. There's probably not a lot of work going around unless you're a stripper or a cocksucker. Nice. So the lead welder exits the cage and fastens his safety harness to the once mighty commie coliseum. And his spotter sits in the crane's cage and spots. The welder, whose safety line is now attached to the fence of the coliseum, fires up his welding gun and starts welding. And as this is only one of 500 of the main joints, he knows he has a big job ahead of him. So he's probably packed a good lunch of boiled potatoes and vodka, which is a dietary preference for all Russians. But as the first beam breaks loose, he realizes that the others are loosening up too, and that it's not going to plan. And you can tell that he's debating whether to leave or not. At this point, when he decides to leave, he has to undo his harness from the fence of the collapsing Coliseum instead of the cage of the crane, which might have been a better idea, because the valuable time taken to undo that harness and jump the fence 
could have been time used to Amscray. And worse still, when the Coliseum starts collapsing, his commie buddy don't even reach out to help him. He holds on to the cage. I guess it's every Ruski for himself in the welding trade. Its mighty Coliseum comes down like a house of commie cards. Now I guess if one was to lyrically wax, they'd say commie ingenuity, Russian stupidity. But not everything goes down with such a mighty thud. South Korea. The land of stinky noodles and South Koreans. Hey, I like their noodles. They're not too bad. You shut the fuck up. Because if I'm being honest with you, I don't give two fucks about either of them. But saying that, if you enjoy your shopping, the Times Square Mall in the center of town, well, that's a place to go. Consider one of the world's biggest malls, five separate buildings, all ten stories high. And as well as there being lots of Koreans there, most certainly there's something for everyone to do. But I guess no one will ever know what this South Korean loony leg mental were doing when he started playing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang with an elevator door. But it seems to have stemmed from someone not holding the elevator door open for him. But as anyone will tell you, the house always wins. And although this crazy Korean cripple came to the mall looking for bargains, it seemed he paid an excess fee with his life. From one stink to another, Paris, France. The land of people who don't wear deodorant and eat snails. But a little known fact is that it were also the home of the first invented flying suit by an Austrian dude called Franz Reinhardt. And although authorities advised that he use a dummy, Franz had big enough balls to say, fuck you, I'm doing it myself. What better location than the Eiffel Tower? Do you think this, uh, the pants are a little too big? Maybe I need a belt? No, I think they look good. Really good. Really good. Look, at they seem to be falling down a bit. Oh, never mind, that's the look. That's the new Parisian look. Look, it looks fucking great. Really fucking what? You think so? Okay. I'm ready to do this. I'm a... Uh, I'm a sight. I'm ready to do this. Okay. Okay. You're looking good. Looking fucking good. Look, I'll see you down there. We'll go get a drink afterwards. Just let me uh, do a wind velocity uh, check here. Okay. Okay. So coming in a little strong from southwest to leap. Don't you pussy out. You got this. You got this one. Okay, I'm just thinking maybe we delay it another day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Awesome! Oh fuck, I knew he should have had a belt for those pants. You will be remembered forever, Franz! Look at the dent he made in the grass. The dent he made is this big. Le Mans. Motor racing's spectacle of spectacles. But it was in 1955 that the spectacle became audience-participated carnage. And with a crowd hitting a quarter of a million, the Reaper had a pretty good selection. Jaguar, Ferrari, Mercedes, the creme de la creme of motor cars, and they all want to be noticed. And this year, they would. And with speeds up to 175 miles an hour, and by today's standard, could be considered the equivalent of driving a skateboard with a seat down the side of a mountain. And that the driver's only real goal is to survive. But it was when Jaguar team's main driver braked to make a pit stop that carnage ensued. Cutting off a Mercedes-Benz who hit a wall divider. His magnesium alloy body evaporated, sending a chassis and engine block through the audience at 125 miles an hour, killing and cutting through 83 spectators like butter, with many of them decapitated. And the driver were left laying there with his pants around his ankles while his wife watched. Fucking embarrassing. And what many believe the man who caused the accident going on to win the race. Enjoy your victory lap, killer. There's an old expression, 
the what goes up must come down. With that expression, don't say how hard it's gonna land. Case and point. Meet one Ivan Lester McGuire, better known to his friends as Lester. And Lester loves to parachute. But Lester also considers himself a videographer. Well, la di da. So at the parachuting school that Lester worked at, he volunteered to video people's first jumps. Got my camera? Check. Microphone? Check. Tripod? Check. Camera case? Check. Parachute? Oh, fuck. Yeah, Lester got so excited about his first day of filming that he jumped out of the fucking plane without his parachute. And when he pulled the cord, the only thing that came out was shit pellets from his ass. And at that very moment, the camera picked up his final words. And as his free fall took up the 90 seconds before he crashed into the ground and turned into a big puddle of sludge, he had a lot of time to lament what a half-wit he was. And I guess keeping in line with his passions, Lester filmed his entire death. Hey, uh, better do something. Even taking what is believed to be one of the world's first selfies. Looking good, Lester. And although some of the footage of his descent survived, unfortunately the best part didn't. The landing. Skidmore's secret. Skidmore, Missouri. It is said that there are no secrets in a small town, but in Skidmore, those who know who killed Ken Rex McElroy won't say. Everybody in this world has got a secret. Whether that's the type of porn that you watch to get yourself off, or dropping that piece of pie on the floor, then dusting it off and serving it to your husband. But it's highly unusual that a whole town would share the same secret. For Skidmore, Missouri had just that, a dirty, filthy little secret. Case in point, meet one Ken McElroy. The man who terrorized the locals of his town for 10 years and had been given the name Mad Dog. Rape, murder, loan sharking, extortion. Hell, he was even arrested for being a pedophile. And even the police were terrified of him. Six foot three, jet black hair, always carrying a shotgun. Had his name tattooed on his knuckles. And my guess is he didn't acknowledge birthdays or Mother's Day. Ken would just as soon as give you a shit kick and then say hello. And if you had a beef with you, he'd drive up and down the street past your house in his pickup truck to let you know that you'd cross a line. But I guess after 10 years of terrifying that tiny town, it was Ken that crossed that line. It was on a Friday afternoon that Ken and his wife went into the local bar and noticed that the bartender were giving free drinks and there were more men in there than usual and that there was a strange feeling in the air. People were staring and saying nothing. We left the d and and went to our pickup. And as soon as we walked out the door, everybody else walked out the door behind us. And they gathered around on my side over here, on my passenger side of the truck. I seen the man go across the street, go to his pickup, take the gun out, and I seen him shoot. McElroy, who was known as the town boy, was killed while dozens of people watched. Investigation into the vigilante-style slaying of Ken Rex McElroy. Ken McElroy terrorized the town of Skidmore, Missouri for more than 10 years. He tried staring you down. He tried to make you feel small. A lot of people have seen it. 50 or 60. People's afraid to see what they see. Because they're afraid what's going to happen to them and their family. But as many as a dozen people outside the D&G and around McElroy's pickup at the time of the shooting. Or there may have been as many as 50 or 60. How many bullet holes? That's part of the investigation and I'm not, I can't tell you. I've heard reports there were two guns used, two weapons used. That is also part of the investigation, I can't tell you. Do you have any suspects? Not at this time. If they catch somebody, and he's tried, and he's found guilty, would you feel that justice has been done? No. 
No, because there was a hotel. Well, I guess every dog has his day.